Hello everyone. This is a topic presentation on federated database systems. To introduce you to federated database systems, we will cover the definition, a brief history, and what a federated database system must have. In the 1980s, Dennis McLeod and Dennis Heimbigner were some of the first people to define what a federated database system is. They proposed a homogenized federated database system that was based on an object-oriented database model. So federated database systems have been around for a while, but what are they? Federated database systems are distributed systems that allow multiple databases to appear as a single entity. Upon a query, a federated database system will go through each component to discover which one contains the information being requested and passes on the request to it. This differs from a centralized database system, which manages a single central authority database. This is simply impractical as we will discuss in further detail later. Further, a federated database system is characterized by distribution, heterogeneity, and autonomy. A federated database must be autonomous. This in itself, according to McLeod and Heimbigner, refers to four capabilities. First, no component should be forced to perform any activity for another. Without the central authority then, cooperation must exist among the components and protocols. Second, no component should be forced to share its data with another. Since cooperation is a must, each component must specify what information will be available to others and how that information can be handled by the others, i.e. read and write, read only, etc. Third, no component should be forced into a set schema of how it will view and combine data. Each should be able to determine the schema that is best suited for its own needs. And finally, each component needs, quote, freedom of association in regard to the Federation. Therefore, each component should be able to freely enter or leave the Federation, as well as modify its data and permissions granted to other components. Heterogeneity refers to the differences in structures, data semantics, constraints supported, and or query languages. Data distribution helps increase access time, reliability, and availability. What problem was there for the federated database system to solve? Due to geographical divisions and differing database management systems in networks of modern companies, a centralized database is unfeasible because there's an absence of a central authority. Therefore, information sharing among multiple databases in very large networks in particular is a problem. Federated database systems are meant to solve this problem by maintaining reasonable autonomy among the database components while still achieving a reasonable amount of information sharing. So, how does the federated database system solve this problem? One example of where a federated database system would be beneficial is in the event of company mergers. A new company would inherit the databases and system components of both original companies, and inevitably, these will have differing management systems. A federated database system would enable the company to simplify the process of accessing the data from both companies, not to mention cut down on the time and manpower necessary. Without a federated system, companies would have to devote human and other capital resources to merging the data in order to gain access and make the best possible decisions for the future and continuation of the company. 
Further examples of places that use and support federated database systems are the Comparative Mouse Genomic Centers Consortium, where the databases are hosted at several university research centers for genotyping and phenotyping as part of the Environmental Genome Project, EGP. The Cell Center Database, where the federated system provides an integrated view of cellular imaging data and currently has over 10,000 unique data sets and 20 terabytes of data. Available at cellimagelibrary.org slash home. The structural proteomic in the Northeast conducts nucleic acids research, where the system stores data from multiple participating universities for protein structure determination. Moreover, a company may not have merged with another, but they may have updated certain aspects of their system, have legacy components. And so a federated database system would allow them to access those legacy components. What advantages are there to a federated database system? It provides autonomy to each component. Access to some item of data is under the control of the component it belongs to. It does not allow indiscriminate imports of all available information to all the other components. And this ensures the integrity and evolution of the federated system. The federated system also allows applications the ability to target the federated database instead of individual specific databases and components. There's no need to merge the databases. And it also allows metadata to be shared to enable other components the ability to view the shared data. And any update is immediately available to the Federation. What disadvantages are there to the Federated database system then? It still requires technical skills. To add a new node, a database administrator will have to add hardware, configure new instance, create a new database, disconnect all users, bringing the system offline, unload data from existing tables, redefine partition tables and indexes, redefine triggers on partitioned or replicated tables, redefine DPVs, distributed partitioned views, reload the data and spread it across partitions, and finally reconnect all users. This is a large management burden that requires the database to be offline the entire time, being potentially very costly to the company. Also, running a query will still take time and not necessarily an insignificant amount at that. Scalability is an issue. As the system grows, performance will decrease since it will have to confer with each node. Therefore, going from a system of 10 databases or components to 12 will result in a decrease of performance since two additional nodes will be contacted. Further, the partitioning key must be included in the query predicate. An application development is also an issue as database images need to be divided and distributed or replicated. Dividing requires creating DPVs distinct on every node, and replication will then need to be kept in sync with instead of triggers. Lastly, when the node fails, recovery is manual and requires the system to be offline. So what technologies are there that are related to federated databases? While Microsoft SQL Server enables federated database systems, the DB2 data joiner introduced the concept of a virtual database. It was announced in 1998 
and was created by a federated database consisting of multiple heterogeneous relational databases. It allowed you to access and join data from different sources with a single SQL statement. IBM's Garlic project expanded upon the DB2 data joiner by combining non-relational databases to exploit query capabilities of incredibly diverse systems. The goal of Garlic is to allow integration of large amounts of multimedia data, such as videos, photos, CAD and CAM systems, search engines, molecular structure databases, the list goes on and on. So what comes next? With all of these disadvantages, is there a better way? Well, Oracle has a proposed solution to the problems of modern companies that will supposedly solve the disadvantages of the federated database system. They've come up with the first working shared disk cluster database architecture. This gives all participating servers equal access to all disks, but, do, but they do not share memory. A database instance is run on every node and can read or update any part of the database as there is no data ownership by any individual node. Their system is called the Oracle 9i Real Application Clusters. How it improves upon the federated database system. Well, in terms of a fix for the application development issues, no partitioning is required because the image will carry over. Further, there are no roadblocks to scalability of shared disk cluster databases. The application scales approximately linearly as the number of nodes in a cluster double. Continuing, node failure recovery is automatic. It senses a failure and it just kicks into recovery mode. Lastly, the database administrator will only need to add in the new hardware and configure the new instance when a new node is added. This means less time is devoted and less technically skilled individuals are necessary, which has a great savings potential for the company. Though, could uh, be unfortunate if you're a database administrator. So to summarize this presentation, Federated database systems are distributed systems that allow multiple databases to appear as a single entity. There are multiple advantages to a federated database system, including autonomy, accessing the federated system instead of multiple individual databases. There's no merging. Uh, there's shareable metadata and immediate updates to the federation. Now, federated database systems also have their disadvantages. They require technically skilled individuals as database administrators, have a management burden, can be costly in terms of management, are not very scalable, complicated, have complicated application development, and has manual node failure recovery. Microsoft SQL Server enables federated database systems, and the DB2 Data Joiner and IBM's Garlic Project utilize federated database systems. In the future, however, it appears as though shared data cluster, or shared disk cluster database architecture, such as the Oracle 9i Real Application cl Cluster, may be what companies use. And again, that may be unfortunate for database administrators. Here at item four, you will see the paper from 1985 from Dr. 
from Dennis Heimbigner and Dennis McLeod.